Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Kevin Morgan, Paul Thiessen, Ali Sanjabi, and everyone welcome our new patron, Matt. Welcome, Matt. Yay! On this episode of DTNS, lions and tigers and AI models secretly scraping data. Oh, my. Plus, should Tesla invest in X.AI to make Tesla better? They are run by the same person. And will Meta's oversight board successfully change some of Meta's current standards? This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, July 25th, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Well, it is a it's a it's a plethora of tech news today. Um, some of it we're going to save for GDI because there just simply isn't enough to cram into one show. <laughs> it's a good problem to have when you work in the business it that really we, is that we do. But without further ado, let's start with the quick hits. Google DeepMind says it has trained two specialized new AI systems, Alpha Proof and Alpha Geometry 2, to solve complex math problems involving advanced reasoning. This is something large language models don't currently do very well because they aren't aware of the info that they give you, which is why LLMs in general aren't great at math. But Alpha Proof and Alpha Geometry 2 worked together and successfully solved four out of six problems from this year's International Mathematical Olympiad, a prestigious event for high schoolers. In other Google news, Gemini's AI chatbot also got an upgrade to the Gemini 1.5 Flash AI model, which was announced at AI IO back in May. It's now available as part of the free version of Gemini on the web and mobile. The Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max triple streaming bundle is now live in the U.S. for $16.99 a month with ads or $29.99 a month without ads. The ad-supported version will save you almost $10 a month compared to paying for each service separately and $20 if you go the no-ad route. The company's hope is to boost engagement and reduce cancellations with the discount angle with overall lower customer acquisition costs. You can only sign up to the bundle through the direct build purchases on the web directly through the Max, Disney Plus, or Hulu websites. You can also switch from an existing standalone Max, Disney Plus, or Hulu subscription to the bundle. However, Hulu Plus Live TV and the Max Ultimate Ad Free Plan are not part of the bundle. AMD identified a problem in the first batch of Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 desktop processors that it sent out to some partners already. A big enough problem that AMD delayed their official launch from the end of this month to August 8th for the 6 and 8 core Ryzen 9600X and 9700X and August 15th for the 12 and 16 core Ryzen 9900X and 9950X. AMD has only said that the chips did not meet its full quality expectations and has pulled them back to replace them out of an abundance of caution. AMD did tell The Verge that the, sh <laughs> that the ships, the chips that will eventually ship, overall aren't the issue. It's just that certain chips didn't go through proper testing. Google is currently the only search engine that can surface results from Reddit. On July 1st, Reddit updated its robots.txt file, which blocked other search engines like Bing and DuckDuckGo from indexing its content. Currently, any search engine that doesn't rely on Google's indexing won't get you anywhere when you search something by adding the popular site colon reddit.com string to the search. Google struck a $60 million deal with Reddit back in February to let Google crawl its data to strengthen Google's AI models, although Reddit denies that this partnership is related to this and that it is simply not reached proper agreements with other search engines over how they plan to use content from Reddit. Speaking of Bing, it got a redesign, which puts AI-generated results front and center with traditional search results over to the right. It's a pretty dramatic change. The new layout is only applying to a handful of queries for now, so it's not a full rollout. Uh, so it's not yet clear whether this might be an opt-in or turn off altogether option with a full rollout, but you might like it too. And Reuters sources say in a few weeks, the European Commission will hit Meta with its first antitrust fine for tying its classified ad service marketplace to Facebook. Last year, the EC accused Meta of setting up an unfair advantage by bundling the two services together. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's talk about scraping data, shall we? 404 Media reports that it has seen a massive internal spreadsheet of training data from a video generation tool made by the company Runway that shows the model was trained in secret by scraping thousands of videos from popular YouTube creators, publishing media outlets, entertainment brands, even pirated films. 404 Media says this includes content from The New Yorker, Vice, Pixar, Disney, Netflix, Sony, among others, and content from popular influencers like Casey Neistat and Marques Brownlee. Originally named Jupiter, it was released officially as Gen 3. That's the name of the model. This was back in June. Runway investors include Google, remember that one, and NVIDIA, among others, currently has a $1.5 billion valuation. In an interview with TechCrunch, along with the Gen 3 launch in June, uh, the co-founder, Anastasius Germanatis, wouldn't offer specifics on where the training data came from, only saying, quote, we have an in-house research team that oversees all of our training, and we use curated internal data sets to train our models. Now, a former employee who declined to be named tells 404 Media that Runway scraped the videos using open source software like YouTube-DL, which has a proxy configuration option that Runway reportedly purchased in order to not get found out and consequently blocked by YouTube. Now, Google responded to the report by pointing 404 to a Bloomberg story from back in April, where Google accused OpenAI of training its AI video generator Sora on YouTube videos, which Google says violates YouTube's rules. Okay, so there's a couple things to unpack here. Uh, runway, if you if if this if this spreadsheet is is accurate, um, even if it's partially accurate, um, to do this in secret uh, is going to upset a lot of people. I wonder, uh, you know, if there is a world because we're not in it yet where. It is just simply the law that all AI models uh, have to, uh, we, we all, we all th like that has to be public knowledge, how, where the data comes from and how it's used. I think ma many companies who are working on various types of models will say, that's ridiculous. You know, these are trade secrets. You know, we can't just have the world knowing, that all, uh, uh, otherwise our competitors will beat us to the punch. But what do we do? What do we do here? Because you got a, you got a lot of people out there, particularly the independent folks who make their money uh, and they're living on YouTube, saying this isn't right. I I, I just wonder, um, are we going to see a law come into place here? Because you, you, Sarah, I think you kind of alluded to this. Something may have to happen here. I mean. You know, we've had the CEO of uh, of Microsoft AI, I think is uh, Mustafa Suleiman. He said that if you don't explicitly say something is not, uh, you know, up for grabs, it's essentially freeware. And that seems to be how companies are are running. And it's almost OK, we're, we're just going to go get this data. And if we get caught, we'll deal with it. But in the in the short term, we're going to get it while the getting is good and, and try to build a company on top of the data that we've gotten. So I, I'm not certain what the answer is, but something's probably going to change here, I would imagine, in the not too distant future, because this problem is simply just not going to go away. Let's let's draw a circle around what the problem is. So these companies and let's say runway specifically are training their model on this content. They're not replicating the content, so therefore it is not specifically copyright infringement in the way that we understand copyright infringement, but they are valued for $1.5 billion, which means if there's a lot of money, someone's gonna want a piece of it. The reality is this, training these models is something that will be fleeting because the more we have seen with models that are at the bleeding edge of this is that synthetic data. Therefore, the information that comes out of the model can make a better, smaller, cheaper, faster model. Which means if you are an independent creator, we have to understand that training the model, quote unquote, no matter how expensive this company is valued, is essentially the same as watching it. And either you can make a deal proactively and try to sell your data to one of these companies or the moment's going to be gone. Because by the time that we get to the speed of government, this is already going to be done. In fact, yeah. I, I would say that there's an argument that it might already be winding down now. 
Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. When it, I, it's 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 tricky. Uh, go ahead, Rob. I was just going to say, yeah. When when I when I thought that there may need to be a law, then I thought, well, wait a minute. Governments make laws, so <laughs> that'll be years. It's it's not going to it's not going to be anything that happens and, quickly. And, 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 by, and, by, and by the way, the 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 lobbyists aren't paid for by Marquise Brownlee and Casey Neistat. I'll tell you that the the, the, the people not. the lobbyists that would be crafting the laws, or at least be in government's ear to say this is how the laws should be crafted, are being paid for by the people that are investing in runway. Right. And and unless Google, which, again, is a runway investor, so that's somewhat complicated, um, unless Google says, OK, we're going to take you to court for doing this, um, has runway really done anything wrong? Just because everyone didn't know about it doesn't necessarily make it illegal. Um, it might violate terms of service. And so that could turn into a, a legal issue. But uh, but yeah, these are these are these are tricky situations. I do feel for folks who feel like they are not um, uh, uh, effectively compensated for their hard work. But we we don't have laws in place to to make them. Well, and what and, and what would they be again? Like they're not replicating the same product. They are creating right. a new product based on this. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get paid for it. But you're the one who's going to have to ask. And if you conscientiously object, then you just have to understand that at some point they might be able to see the product and train their model on you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be hard to figure that out. So let's change gears a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, Elon Musk and his companies. Tesla CEO Elon Musk intends to discuss with Tesla's board a $5 billion investment with XAI, the artificial intelligence startup Musk is also the CEO of. Musk said on X, the social media platform he owns, looks like the public is in favor. We'll discuss with Tesla board after a poll on X showed 68% of respondents would be in favor of such an investment. The reason for the proposed investment is because Musk wants to expedite the development of a Tesla robo-taxi and self-driving products. My question is, can companies of this size and magnitude effectively be run or owned by a single person that is at the same time, you know, they're running multiple companies. Can they have interest in all of these companies be separate from each other? You know, can, can you basically run one company and know what the other company is doing and go back and forth? It just gets, it gets very confusing. And I'm, I'm not sure how this works. Justin, what do you think? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, specifically with Elon Musk, he is the glue that essentially puts together a bunch of different organizations that, would otherwise wind up making far more expensive, far less integrated partnerships with other similar partners. And obviously he's done this in a lot of different places, Solar City, Starlink, SpaceX, and now here Tesla and XAI specifically. That being said, I do think that it is interesting to say that this is not the first time that Elon has thought that he has solved AI. He thought Tesla was going to solve AI, and now he has raised a ton of money, so in, including partly from Tesla, to try to fund another operation. Let's remember that Elon's departure from OpenAI was essentially on ideological lines where he believed that either he should run it or he was going to hire away a lot of the talent to Tesla, which he wound up doing on the belief that AI could be developed on very, very small uh, uh, and, and compact hardware. That was not the case. OpenAI and under Sam Altman's leadership went the opposite direction, raised a bunch of money from Microsoft and realized that the AI that is going to power the future are on very expensive computers. That's where we are now. And Elon's playing catch up with his own money. I love the framing of, hey, public on X, let me just take a poll. Informal poll. You know, we, we, this is one of the things that we offer. Uh, 68% of you want me to do this. Okay, I'll talk to the board. I mean, let's get real here. This is, you know, a, a lot of theater because if it doesn't happen, then he can say, well, you know, stupid boards. You know, if only they left me more in charge, we could actually get something done. I think it's, I mean, it's advantageous. I don't care who you are to be able to say, I've got this company, Tesla. We're doing great things. We want to do more things. This other company... Uh, if we if we can if we can take some of that money from from the, the the company that's good but needs to get better to the other company that is is going to make this company better and we were talking about Venn diagrams before the show I mean it's such a Venn diagram I don't even know and uh, and you know that that's not necessarily a bad thing you've got two 
I mean, there's probably some overlap, but two different teams doing doing different things. I I would love to see what Tesla's robo taxi uh, situation looks like. I'm I'm bullish on on robo taxis in general. So, um, you know, setting aside how you might feel about a, a particular person who's running these companies, it's messy because you do have one person with an inordinate amount of power uh, above the other. However, you know, thousands of people who are are working under him, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I I I don't know how how much this bothers me. Yeah, if I take the other side of it, I, I wonder. So let's say that you have, um, you know, Tesla, and Tesla's doing really good, and but it needs an AI partner, and then he mm-hmm. also is the CEO of XAI, but XAI is not doing good it may behoove Tesla to go work with another company, but because the CEO of your company is also the CEO of that company, is he doing his due diligence by saying, you know what I can, if I get some money over here in this other company, then we can potentially do better. Whereas Tesla could say we can do better just by going with better technology now. So I wonder if you run into those conflicts of interest to where you've got one person that owns a company or is at the top of two or three other companies and are all dealing with each other. From an investor standpoint, are you always getting what is in best interest of the shareholder as compared to what's in best interest of shareholders of another company that technically is a completely separate entity? So let me let me ask you this, uh, Rob. If we take Elon out of it, and let's understand that Elon is not a word. He's a paragraph in everybody's mind. But let's say that that it's just generic CEO. And they went to OpenAI. OpenAI made an agreement to provide AI capability to Tesla's automobiles. Do you think that OpenAI's value would go up or down? Oh, it would definitely go up. So it would go up. Let's say that it was a scrappier AI company. Let's say it's Anthropic that made a deal. Do you think that they would go up or down? Well, yeah, the, the bigger companies got the gravity, so it's going to potentially pull up whoever you do the bill, the, the, you know, the deal with. The question exactly. is, is that still the best deal for you being well, let the me, bigger let me, company? Yeah, let me, let me, yeah, let me finish that. So let's say you got a cheaper deal than you would get from anyone else, and you were fully integrated, and it was entirely dependent on this company was entirely dependent on Tesla succeeding. Do you think that that would be the best deal that Tesla could make? Not necessarily. And legally, necessarily. companies companies can't really operate like that. When you're when you're doing that due diligence, they, there are laws that make you stay very very separate when you're when you're thinking about doing these deals because you don't want to basically you know you know bake the goods as we would say. So I, I don't know that that's always the case. In this case, it probably is, but in yes. in some cases, I can see where it wouldn't be. So I so I, just, I, I, I would I would agree. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree. Obviously, there, there are conflicts of interest, but this is kind of frontier medicine. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that's happening here where deals are being made that might be undone in two years. The one thing that we know for sure is that Elon's tied into the success of both companies. And so if that's your CEO, then, you know, that that's my quarterback, as Tara Lowens once said. <laughs> So I want to recap of the week's tech headlines with insights into how technology affects and disaffects communities of color. Then check out the check, John, where host Rob Dunwood, I know that guy, Stephanie Humphrey and Terrence (laughs) Gaines dive into the top tech stories of the week delivered from points of view you don't always hear in mainstream media. New episodes land Tuesday afternoons. Find it on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast or visit thetechdon.com. That's thetechjawn.com. On Thursday, Meta's Independent Oversight Board ruled that Meta's standards were not sufficiently clear in barring sexually explicit AI-generated depictions of real people and called for changes to prevent this kind of imagery from circulating on Meta's platforms. The ruling stems from the review that the Oversight Board took of two explicit fakes of famous women that were created using AI tools and then posted on places like Facebook and Instagram. The board found both images violated Meta's rule barring derogatory sexualized Photoshop, which the company classifies as a form of bullying and harassment. It also said Meta should have removed them promptly. Meta said it would review the board's recommendations and provide an update on any changes adopted. So Justin, uh, the oversight board has had success and failure from within Meta. So where do you see this one going? 
Well, I think that it's part of a larger conversation about these kinds of uh, images. Uh, you've seen not only the oversight board, but also some state houses and even some movement on federal legislation for what are essentially very crude, but also very easily created, quote unquote, naked photos of uh, uh, usually women that get put into apps or various different web applications that will remove their clothes, right? Uh, yeah. This is not anything materially different than stuff that has happened via Photoshop for much of the internet's existence, but the speed of which you can do it and the lack of skill that you need has made it become something that obviously just affects more people. And with that, you've seen a lot of controversies, specifically in high schools, of, uh, you know, people circulating in group chats, pictures of real, uh, oftentimes underage women. So it does not surprise me that this is being brought up beyond the legal culpability of making it. I do think that massive platforms like Meta, uh, X and Instagram, Snapchat are probably going to have to deal with this as a publishing platform. And, and we're seeing kind of a, a you know, a, a bit of a limit to the, the world of safe harbor where if, if something is so odious or something is so affecting to people, then you're going to see at the very minimum a public outcry to do something about it. Yeah, before AI, it, it would take Photoshop to do this and, and yeah. skill within Photoshop to make it look like it was real. So the problem that you're having now, and you mentioned this is happening to young girls in high school, in, in middle school, is that in addition to how easy it is to do it and how good it actually looks as far as how real it actually looks, you're now creating a digital footprint that's going to follow these people literally forever. That stuff is never going to go away. Uh, it may be taken down, but you're always going to be linked to it, even though it wasn't you. So it, it, it is very problematic. And these platforms... They, they are going to have to figure out how they mitigate these risks, because, as I said, it's 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 one thing and it's and it's horrible when it was done with Photoshop. But because it, it took an artist and it took time and you would only go after the quote unquote, the celebrities to do those kind of things. And now it can literally be anyone. You just put an app on your phone and, and take a picture of someone and it's done. It, it you know it's it's the same issue, but it is just giving you tools that allow you to do it so much more quickly. It's scale and effectively scale. And, and at scale, and like yeah. I said, that's going to stick with people forever once it gets once it gets attached to them. I also think it's interesting that the you know along with saying hey Meta you got to do some things differently, the board wants Meta to change the terminology that Meta uses from derogatory in the case that I explained above, it was uh, derogatory sexualized Photoshop, even if it wasn't used with Photoshop, that's just how they, uh, how they uh, categorized it from derogatory to non consensual, which I think is, is that that's, that really opens up so somebody saying, you know, well, this is not necessarily derogatory. Maybe it's not even necessarily, a, you know, a, a fake nude. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of these cases tend to be about, oh, you know, you made it look like I was naked and that's not a real photo type thing. But there are lots of other kinds of photos. You could put me in a situation where I don't know, I am shooting somebody and that didn't ha you know, th that kind of stuff that is not necessarily derogatory to everybody in the whole world but it's non-consensual to me because it looks like I'm doing it. So I think the board is kind of saying, listen, the sexual stuff is a real problem. We've got to, we've got to deal with this. But at the same time, we have to deal with these tools in general. Well, and, and, and especially because what you want to do is empower the people that feel uh, or are victimized by it. Right. You, you want to be able to say by saying it's non-consensual, you are essentially opening up more avenues for the victim to say, I need this down or I need this down now. If it is just a general terms of service thing, then it is up to the the judgment of some moderator somewhere within within Meta. Uh, uh, but, but Sarah, I, I would I would ask you, because between. Rob and I, I don't know how many people would, would, uh, uh, you know, take, take liberties, but you have been famous amongst nerds. Uh, 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 you know, how, how do, how do you view the, the weaponization and, and at scale of these technologies? 
Yeah, you know, if I was in middle school, or I mean, I don't know, just <laughs> even a decade ago, I mean, at this point, I'd just be like, that's stupid. That's not me. You know, yeah. that's, just, that's just not me. Yeah, you know, and it, go, go, go crazy, nerds. But um, <laughs> th this would have been something that could be, you know, extremely crushing. In fact, there was there was a um, there was a photo that circulated around the internet for years. It's probably still around somewhere. And it, it was just it was somebody dressed as Pr Princess Leia. It wasn't me, but somebody said it was. And she yeah. was kind of like off to the side, so it was like you kind of had to look really close. Like I knew it wasn't me. I just have never had that outfit or worn one. Um, but uh, you know, it was kind of it was sort of risque, and I, you know, it really bothered me. I'm like, it's not, it's just not me. And a lot of people just don't care to like do enough research. Well, we know this about all things always that people don't yes. always do great research. But you know, that kind of thing, that that, and that was just mistaken identity. You know, that was not somebody, I, I think, trying to go after me and make it seem like I was wearing, you know, some cosplay thing. But, uh, yeah, this stuff is, uh, it, it can be harmful and, uh, you know, I mean, non-consensual is, is just the tip of the iceberg for how it uh, makes people feel. And, again, this is meta that we're talking about. This is not some little upstart who's like, we made an app. Um yeah. It's fun and don't do anything wrong kind of thing, even though a lot of these startups know exactly what they're doing and they want uh, their tools to be used on Meta so that people keep downloading their app. But, you know, eventually it just Meta's just too big to to not figure this out. They're not going to mm -hmm. get every bad image, bad video, bad posts. There's just no way. But uh, the oversight board is saying, hey, you got to do better. Yeah, the, the pornography part of it is is, is horrible, but... Justin, I think where you and I would probably be, you know, more concerned is that someone does a really, really good deep fake of us being someplace that we were not. And then they're saying, what were you doing here? It's like, that's not me. And even though at some point you could get that figured out, it's just the, the initial thought that there's going to be people who are going to believe the mistake, not the retraction of it. So, yeah, Yameda's got to do something to uh, I mean, you know, allow people to get this, you know, this stuff down when it's, you know, potentially adversely affecting them. Like, like anything though, in the world of moderation. And I've been the one on this show specifically saying that moderation can often be a hashtag hell portal, hashtag portal to hell, because every tool comes with unintended consequences. I do believe that there should be a tool for which somebody can report a, a non-consensual uh, videos and pictures of themselves. I do believe that the moderation service, which I think gets undersold with platforms like these, I've had a little bit of a window into similar ones. Let me just tell you the stuff that gets pulled down off these sites would scar you for life. Like th there is absolute the worst. Yes. The thing you're thinking of worse than that is being pulled down at scale every single day. That being said, in the margins, you want a tool that is effective, that doesn't overly uh, affect people's ability to share things online or a window into censorship. It is a far harder problem than anybody gives it uh, credit for. And these kind of tools with these kind of victims make the problem even harder. So Justin Robert Young. Um, it was, it was a slow week in politics. I, I don't oh. think there's much going on. I wanted to find out about oh. what happened or didn't happen. Oh. Where, 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 where might one go to find out about just what's not happening in politics over the weeks? I need a white swan event. That's what I want. I want, I want a precedented week in politics. Unfortunately, they have been in short supply these last three, but you can see all of it at uh, uh, Politics, 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 available wherever you find your uh, uh, audio podcast. And then, of course, on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Politics, Politics, Politics. Everything we do is now hybrid video and audio, including our entire week at the RNC and any time that I get to spend at the DNC, depending on how unborn my daughter stays during late August. So uh, <laughs> we, will, we will see how that goes. But Politics, 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 oh boy. Our cup runneth over. Maybe one day you'll get uh, to take a nap or just a good night's sleep, Justin. I don't I, know when I, that day's going to be, would but settle, maybe. I would settle for a normal weekend. I would settle for a weekend without world-breaking once-in-a-generation news. That, that I'll settle for that this weekend. Yeah, once in two generations. Yeah, right. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs>
<laughs> Politics world, you've heard it here. Justin would like a nice weekend. Yes. Uh, patrons, you, you, we hope you all have nice weekends as well. Stick around for our extended show, even though it's only Thursday. Good day, internet is next. Isn't it great how much AI has decreased all of our workloads across the board? I love that. Oh, wait. No, not everybody feels that way at all. In fact, some people strongly disagree. We'll talk about perception versus reality when it comes to all these new tools in the workplace. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com forward slash live. We'll be back tomorrow with Will Harris. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>